Seniors need to get pictures to the yearbook this month. The school district is trying to send a positive message to the community. How much of your favorite foods are you actually supposed to eat? And we talk to Central Dads playing football in college. Hi, I'm Jabez Darrow and you're watching Eagles Home. I'm joined this week by Oscar Muir, one of our best foreign exchange students. Another important yearbook deadline is coming your way, and this one's for you seniors. You have until Thanksgiving break to submit your senior pictures and your baby pictures. In the past, many seniors have relied on deadline extensions and submitted pictures late. But Eagles Own's Courtney Thorstenson joins us with a warning if that's your mentality this year. Senior pictures need to be in November 21st. This will help the yearbook staff meet an early December deadline set by its publisher. It's on that date the yearbook class needs X number of pages submitted. I'm not making up this number or this date. This is something that has been given to me by the people that make our yearbook. Um, and so we need to get those photos in by a certain time to meet their requirements. That's why seniors need to respect their deadline. So far, there haven't been all that many turned in. We have a group of seniors in our class, the film kids, who you probably recognize. So we're gonna ask them if they've got their stuff in. Hey guys, who all has their uh, senior photos in? Cody. Uh, none of Cody us. Does. None of you besides, guys? Besides Red. Besides Red? Mm -hmm. Baby po pic pic pictures too? No. No? No? <laughs> none of us. None. No. All right then. <laughs> I don't have mine in either, so I'm not really one to talk. <laughs> but I will submit my pictures in time. If you don't turn in the senior picture of your choice, you might have your generic school picture in the yearbook instead. There is a possibility that if someone uh, has a good reason for not having their senior photo in, that we might be able to work with them, but I can't promise that. And he says he does mean that, so if you're banking on an extension, that might not happen. Reporting for Eagle Zone, I'm Courtney Thorstenson. Thanks, Courtney. And don't forget that date. November 21st to guarantee your senior picture will appear in the yearbook this year and not the generic school picture. Allstate musicians are back in Aberdeen after traveling to Rapid City for this year's Allstate Chorus and Orchestra. Aberdeen Central sent five quartets for chorus. Three orchestra members from CHRS auditioned into Allstate this year. In orchestra, musicians compete against others throughout the state to earn a spot. For chorus, each school is given a set number of slots to fill so musicians compete with others at Central to go. Holgate will be presenting the House of Thrills and Chills to extend the Halloween week on Thursday, November 2nd and Friday, November 3rd at 7 p.m. Adults are $2 and students are $1. Activity passes are accepted. The school district wants you to hear about positive things happening in all its buildings. Administrators have hired a marketing director to make that happen. Casey Riley joins us to explain. Casey? Every school district has its own unique story to tell, with every school undergoing new changes every day, and the Aberdeen schools are no exception. That is why the Aberdeen School District has hired a new marketing director. My goal is to tell the story of the school district, and that can be through press releases, social media posts, showing up at events like yesterday here and taking pictures, and updating the website. That's a lot of what I do. I think the marketing director in the short time that we've had one on staff has already made a tremendous difference in the information that's being shared about the school district. She finds ways to um, highlight various projects and events and activities that we're doing in the school district. Things that we do each and every day but really gives a, 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 tells the story and gives people information about what's coming up next. There's so much going on at the school district that like you ask people and they're like, I didn't know we did that. And as a parent, sometimes I didn't know either, but it was like, that's so cool. I want you to do a story about that. And now I'm that person because um, some of the schools were already, or most of the schools were already getting some of that information out. But it's nice to have one person to be able to focus on that and kind of help enhance it. Um, please feel free to reach out to me. You can email elissa.dickey at k12.sd.us um, to any, any story ideas, anything you have going on, especially like teachers in their classrooms. Sometimes what I've found is they don't realize how cool the stuff is that they're doing. Um, it's just a regular day for them, but I would love to come out and take pictures, talk to some students, or talk to the teacher. And same with community members um, or community organizations. If they feel free to contact me, if there's a partnership, we can talk about it and see what we can do. You can see Alyssa Dickey's work on the school district website and on social media platforms. I'm sure most of us have seen, maybe even paid attention to the nutrition label on food. One part of the label includes serving sizes. Eagle Zone's Joseph Lopez Martinez went around the school to learn more about serving sizes and test people's knowledge about them. What's up guys, uh, we're going around Central High School just interviewing people about the serving sizes and uh, yeah, we're going to see the reactions, let's, come on, let's go. Sir, 
What do you think is the serving size for Oreos? I'm gonna say six or seven. I'd say about eight. Probably like two to four, maybe. Okay, I bet the serving size is probably two. That would be my guess, but I mean, who doesn't eat the whole sleeve, am I right? We checked with an expert for that one. Renee Borcher teaches culinary classes at the high school. Well, a portion size is really just what you eat in one portion, which is different than what a serving size is. So a serving size is what the label itself says. And according to the U.S. Food and Drug Administration, by law, serving sizes must be based on the amount of food people typically eat, rather than how much they should eat. So serving sizes are the amount people usually eat or drink. Back to Oreos. I don't know. Ten. Three. Three is actually right. I don't know who typically stops at that number. What do you think the normal serving size is for ramen? One. Just one? Like a whole package. <laughs> the whole thing. The whole thing. I mean, I would hope it'd be per ramen or, you know, bag, wouldn't it? The full block of ramen. Yes. One. Oh, for sure, one. Actually, it's half the block. Stop it. Who eats half a thing of ramen? No, that is <laughs> impossible. Nobody's eating half a block. Why would you cook that whole thing? What do you think is the serving size for cereal? A uh, cup and a half. One bowl? Um, a bowl. A full bowl? A full bowl. Whatever fills you up. Uh, well, I mean, it depends what kind of cereal, right? If it's Reese's Puffs, the whole box. That one depends on the kind of cereal, but usually somewhere between one third of a cup and a cup. And if you find it hard to believe, that's the amount people typically eat. Sometimes the serving size is even smaller than it seems. And um, an example of meat would be four ounces, and that would be pre-cooked weight, so it's actually three ounces cooked. What do you think is the normal serving size of ice cream? Two scoops. One? One cone? A whole container. Mmm, like two scoops. Oh, I think it's a half a cup. Ice cream. Whole box. Ten bites. A little bowl. Three scoops. And if you're guessing, it's a lot less. Yup, two-thirds of a cup. Reporting for Eagle Zone, I'm Joseph Lopez Martinez. We'll be right back after this message from media production students. <laughs> Welcome back. Sports are starting to slow down this time of year, but Eagles own Zoe Stuckey joins us with the results. Zoe? We're nearing the break between fall and winter sports seasons, but we're not there yet. The volleyball team is finishing its regular season with the playoffs starting this month. We have highlights for you from a recent Watertown match. The Eagles host the Arrows in Aberdeen. We start in the first set. Eagles down by one when senior Airely Waldo sets it up to senior Taryn Neiman to tie up the score. Now on to the second set, with the Eagles down by two when Neiman and freshman Olivia Miller jump up to block the hit. That closes the gap by one. Ahead to the third set, freshman Lauren Burkhard gets the ball served up to her and the spike is too hot to handle. Still in the third, Eagles down when sophomore Kennedy Withers spikes the ball and the arrows can't return it. But in the end, it isn't enough for the Eagles. Watertown takes the match in three sets. And the football season has ended for the Golden Eagles with a first round loss to the Arrows in Watertown. But there's still some athletes you might recognize playing football. Eagles owns Jabez Darrow explains why you might be interested in Northern State's freshman scrimmage this year. We've never covered a freshman scrimmage for NSU here on Eagles on before, but we are this year for an obvious reason. Oh uh, yeah, I'm pretty excited. You know, during the year it's just scout, 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 there's not very much uh plan going on. You don't really dress for many of the games, so I think it's a good opportunity for us to show that we do more than just play scout and that we actually have the talent to play at the level that we're able to play at. Eagles Zone's favorite Brian Johnson will be on the field and Eagles Zone's alum Carson Sarda. Uh, the teams were decided by like it was like a draft, like a mock draft, like kind of how like the NFL draft does it. They pick a player and then you go up and you get your jersey, you take a picture, so that way. The offense and the defense also had like two different teams, so, like the seniors on the teams, chose the teams. The two NSU freshmen and Central graduates redshirted this year. 
so they're excited to return for some competition in this scrimmage. Um, yeah, so the game's Friday. It's at, uh, it's a little bit after our practice. Uh, if you guys would want to come watch, that would be cool. But yeah, it should be a good, a good experience and a good time. We're used to seeing these athletes compete well in high school. We'll see Friday how they stack up against other college recruits. Uh, it's a lot faster. It's a lot more mentally and physically draining. Like I could practice all week in high school and I'd be fine, but like a week practice here, it's like I feel like I've played like five games within the week. And it's just a lot more technique that goes into it as well. Like in high school, you can just be a lot stronger than people, but in college, you have to actually work on being technically better than the person across from you. Looking beyond the freshman scrimmage, if you want to watch the Wolves football team play, they host Augustana this Saturday the 4th at 2 p.m. And on future shows, we'll follow the volleyball team into the postseason, and we'll start to preview winter sports. Oscar? Thanks, Zoe. That's all for this episode of Eagle Zone. You can always watch our stories by scrolling down to the Eagle Zone section of the school district website. That's Aberdeen.k12.st.us. We'll leave you this week, well, with absolutely nothing because we don't have extra video. But we'll have some next week with my co-anchor from New Zealand, I'm Jabez Darrow, signing out with Eagle Zone.